This entire 4K video system has just been fun to use over the last few months. A 4K touchscreen video switcher and 4K PTZ cameras. I wanna walk you through some of my favorite features of this setup and let you know that if you're considering going 4K, this is an option that you might want to take note of. Now, whether you plan on streaming in 1080p or 4K, one thing I learned a long time ago is you wanna be able to future-proof yourself. So this solution doesn't mean run out and start streaming in 4K right away because you may not have the infrastructure or the internet bandwidth to do so, but if it's something you think you're gonna do in the near future within a couple years, this is something that you want to consider when purchasing equipment. And this solution will definitely future-proof you for 4K. Now there's no way that I'm gonna be able to go through all the features of these PTZ cameras or the video switcher itself, but in the description section of this video, I'm gonna to link to Data Video, their website, and specifically to their cameras and the video switcher if you want to read up more on it. Highly encourage you to check them out. I was not familiar with the plethora of equipment that they have when it comes to video equipment. So if you want a one-stop shop, Data Video is the option for you to check out. Let's first start by taking a look at this 12X camera. This is the PTC. 280 4K camera, a 12X camera that can now stream at 4K resolution. Now, in general, PTZ cameras aren't the best for low light. You definitely want to have proper lighting when using any PTZ camera. But because these are both 4K cameras, that means the sensor is better. And that means even in low light situations, you'll now have better performance because of the capabilities of the cameras themselves. Now to start using the camera, you need to power it on. And both of these do come with an included power adapter. However, this power adapter cord is a little short. And if you're mounting these cameras on a tripod, you will find yourself needing a power extension just to reach the power outlet. So the other option that you do have when powering these cameras is using PoE because they are both PoE compatible. And that's how I have them powered on right now. Both are using a Cat7 cable connected to my PoE switch and it brings power directly to the camera. Now, even though this power cord is short, one thing I do like about it is the barrel connection because you don't have to worry about it just falling out of the camera or if someone trips, just yanking it out. You can plug this into the back of your camera and then screw it in tight. And then you have a nice solid connection. Now let's talk about how we can transmit video from our cameras to our source, because there are a few different ways. These are IP cameras. So because we just power them on using the ethernet connection, we can also send video over ethernet as well, which is an easy way to transmit data. Another way that we have are SDI connections, which both of these cameras have. So if you wanna do longer cable runs, you can use SDI connections to do so. You also have my preferred way is HDMI connections. And these HDMI connections allow you to transmit the 4K. Now I like to use fiber HDMI connections. They are one way cable, so make sure that you connect them source and display on the correct ends. But this does allow you to have long cable runs because they are fiber HDMI. And I've actually used these cables up to 300 feet. So with multiple different ways to connect your camera sources, you definitely can choose the option that's best for you. Now, one question that I do get a lot here on the channel is regarding audio and PTZ cameras. I personally like to send my audio separate from my video feed. However, if you do want to connect audio to this camera, you can do that using the 3.5 millimeter connection on the back. Simply plug in your microphone and you're good to go. And if you're using HDMI, you're able to send your video and your audio over the same channel. And the last connection that I wanna mention is the RS422 connection. This is allowing us to connect the camera directly to this switcher and control the pan, tilt, and zoom movements. And I think that is the most powerful part of this whole setup. Now we have an all-in-one dedicated video switcher and joystick controller right here. This is what excites me about this setup. Now, as I'm looking at my preview monitor, one thing that's a little bit difficult to see is the tally lights on here. Now, in person, it is really easy to recognize the green on this light and the red on this light. 
Having tally lights on PTZ cameras is a must for me going forward. It allows the talent to know which camera is live. Have you ever worked with someone and they look at the wrong camera at the wrong time? They just don't know which one is the camera they should be looking at? Well, there's no mistaking this. This is the green. That means it's in preview mode. This is red. That means it's live right now. And with the tap of a button, we can go from green to red. Now this camera is red and it's the live camera. Now, if you don't have a camera that's in preview mode like this right now, no light would be showing. So having tally lights on your preview and live is one of those things that a PTZ camera just has to have in my book going forward. Now, if you're in a situation where you're not working with dedicated talent that is responsible for looking directly at a camera, the tally lights might not be a big deal for you. But if you're doing anything like interviews or live stream shows, then you know the importance of a tally light. Now, the second 4K PTZ camera is a 20X zoom. It has all the same connections as the previous one. It just now has a further zoom distance. This is the PTC 300 version. Now, as I turn these cameras to the side, you'll notice that there are vents on the side. So on each side, you do have a vent, keeps these cameras nice and cool. And one thing that I noticed right off the bat, in comparison to some of the other PTZ cameras that I've used, these are a little bit heavier. So they have a little bit more girth. Make sure that if you're mounting these, that you mount them securely and properly. Now let's look at the brains of the operation. This touchscreen 4K PTZ panel. This thing has a lot of bells and whistles and I just don't have enough time to go through everything. Definitely check out Data Video's YouTube page as well. I'm gonna to link to that in the description, along with the links to where you can actually purchase these items if you wanna check them out in full detail. And by the way, make sure that you're subscribed to the channel. Hit the subscribe button. I got a lot of videos coming because I got a lot of new equipment showing up here as well, and you don't wanna miss it. Where to begin, where to begin. We'll go through the back panel here and talk about the connections first. Now, the first step in the process is to power it on. And this does come with a 12 volt power adapter. This also has a power on and power off button, which I really like on video switchers. I wish all of them had that feature. So once this is powered in, we'll simply select the button on the back and it will boot up and power on this unit. Now, when you power on this unit, you will hear it kick on and you will also hear it throughout the duration of using it. It's not overpoweringly loud, but it is something that I did notice while using it, thinking maybe that it would go into some type of silent mode, but this is a massive system that is processing 4K data, so I do give it some grace there. Now, when it comes to connecting audio here, I like to use the quarter inch line in. Typically, I'm running on audio mixer, some type of audio interface. And for today, I actually have my Rodecaster Pro, which I'm gonna set up for the demonstration. And I can run quarter inch into this panel, and that way I can bring in my true audio from my audio interface and control everything there. This unit also has multiple HDMI outputs, one of which is used right now being connected to the seven inch data video monitor. This allows you to see what is live right now, what I'm looking at. So camera one is live, camera two is now live. Now my computer home screen is live. So you can see all of the live, your the outputs using the HDMI app. All right, let's take a look at the top of this unit. Over on the top left, we have a headphone jack. So this is gonna allow us to hear the audio coming in, make sure that everything is proper. Make sure we're not peaking, make sure the volume's not too low. Beside this on the top, we also have an SD card slot. So you can record internally to this unit, which is a very nice feature to have. It's a backup to a backup to a backup. And if you haven't seen me mention that in the other video, I'll link to that in the video where I actually set this up for a conference. And then beside it to the right, you'll see that our audio meter is there. And so this will go up and down as audio is being fed into the unit. Below this section, we can actually control our audio levels using the volume control knob, channel one, channel two, aux, digital, and master mix. So all your audio is gonna be in the upper left-hand corner of this unit. There are so many different features. I cannot get to all of them. Make sure that you're subscribed to the Data Video homepage. I wish I could cover everything, but this video would be way too long. Then you would stop watching. Then my retention graphs would go down, and we don't want that. Here's what I actually have been using on this a lot. 
the camera one, two, and three settings. If you select camera one, this will allow you to control all the settings for camera one. So if I wanna pan in camera one, I can do that right now because I have it selected. So on the screen here, I'm going to select camera one and then select zoom out and then zoom in. And you can see me zooming in. And let's get over here to my vitamin water here. And so now I'm zoomed in on my vitamin water. Now, typically you may not want to control your live camera, but there are instances where you have to, right? But what I really like is the ability to be able to control your preview as well. So if I tap camera two as it's in preview mode, I can also zoom in and zoom out and pan, tilt and zoom. So now when I cut to camera two, I'm already looking at the other PTZ camera that I'm using to record this video. And now I can go back to my camera one and change that back out to a wide shot, behind the scenes, no one notices. And then when I set up camera one, I'm back to that wide shot. I really like having everything right here in front of me and I don't have to reach for controllers or anything. It's all right here, literally at the touch of a button. Now, if I look at the bottom half of this panel, there are a lot of options to work with. The first one being the switcher option. And this is what's gonna allow us to set up camera presets. So if I use camera one, for example, and move that slightly over to look at my entire laptop, I can now store this as a preset simply selecting STR and then storing it as number one. Now, if I wanna move my camera over to the left and we'll pan up to our PTZ controller over here, I can select store and two. Now I have this new angle as a preset. In order to call your presets, it's just a matter of touching the button, one, We'll go back to the laptop, the first preset, and selecting two, we'll go over to the second shot. So setting up presets and working with them makes your workflow a lot easier, especially if you're doing the production side of live streaming. Another menu grouping we have is the setup menu. And this is what allows us to automatically change settings such as our white balance, our focus, and our iris. All of this can be done at a touch of a button. And the last section actually labeled menu allows us to change things such as picture in picture. We can set up crop modes. We can set up Luma key. We can set up our camera. We can set up the resolution that we want to stream at. There are a lot of different options and it's all right here. As you've noticed, I haven't even mentioned anything about logging into a website to do all this. You can do so much right here on the touch screen. Now on the right hand side of the controller, we have our joystick, which allows us to pan and tilt our cameras. Just below that, we have our zoom rocker, so we can zoom in and zoom out. And then below that, we have our transition effects, high, medium, and low effects based on the speed that you want. We also have physical transition buttons, PIP, Luma, fade to black, wipe, cut, and an auto transition. So I've walked you through some of the basics, like the basics of this setup. I wanna get these set up over here so that you guys can see the quality compared to some of the other cameras I have here. No knock on any PTZ camera, but these are 4K cameras versus 1080p cameras. So let me get these connected so you can see the difference. Now, I'm not gonna stream in 4K, we're not gonna record in 4K, but you'll be able to see a side-by-side -side comparison of what the resolution looks like because I think most of you all will probably only be using 1080p, but because the sensor is better, you'll notice that the quality is just gonna be better too. So in order to set this up side by side, I'm gonna take this 20X camera because the camera that's directly in front of me is also a 20X, so that way you can see the resolution and connect this directly into my ATEM because that's how I'm recording the video. So it's gonna make my life a lot easier to do it that way. So let's get this all set up. Now here's our final impromptu video test. The 1080p camera that I've been using to record this entire video is on the left and the data video 4K PTZ camera is on the right of the screen. Let me know in the comments, do you see a difference? Which one is clear? Now, keep in mind that I am just using the default settings on both cameras and plug them directly into a 1080p ATEM switcher. So that's gonna downscale it on my video recording. 
but if you're streaming in 4k i'm telling you you will see a significant difference now i don't have 4k all set up to do that test maybe in the future maybe you guys leave a comment I can do that test because it does take a little bit of time to reconfigure everything here in the office to do so. Make sure you check out the next video here on the channel as we continue to talk more about PTZ cameras and live streaming.